thank you guys for joining us today. We'll let take a couple minutes and give everybody a chance to get logged on and then we'll get started. Oh, okay, go ahead. Well, I know we still have a few people trying to get logged on, but we'll go ahead and get started so we don't run out of time. Thank you for joining us today on Being a Strong Self-Advocate. You have a wonderful panel of the Self-Advocates of Indiana Board Officers to help walk you through today's session. Just a couple of things so that um, you know how today is going to work. Um, you are not able to unmute yourselves, but we encourage questions. So if you have a question, please go to the box on the bottom of your screen that says Q&A. Type your questions there and we will let the, the officers know what questions you have today. So um, with that, I will turn it over, Sean, to you. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, one more quick thing before I forget, I almost forgot the most important part. Today's session is sponsored by IPMG. So thank you very much, IPMG, for helping us with the conference this year and letting everybody attend for free. All right, Sean, it's all yours. Is it? Hey, Mel, you might want to end, um, so, well, turn on your camera so everybody I don't, can see. Okay, so what is it? I'm not it's, seeing it. It's up at the top right, Mel. You just, it's like where you see the button where you un unmute yourself. That's, it's got your, it's got an X over the video and then it's red and you just, Turn it off. Turn it on. I don't. It's okay. Bryce is helping her. Okay. okay. Um, thanks everybody for coming to our session today. Um, it's going to be informal, you know, because it's kind of weird times for a conference. We're doing it virtual, so it's kind of weird. Um, and I hear myself echoing, so Kim must be listening. <laughs> um, so um, the intro is, what is Self-Advocates of Indiana? Self-Advocates of Indiana is an organization ran by people with disabilities for people with disabilities. And our, this is our, uh, mission statement for right now. I'm working on a brand new mission statement that is a lot, probably a lot better than the one we have right now. Um, we are citizens who speak out, advocate, and educate for equal rights, respect, and inclusion for all in the community. So, with that, I will ask the, um, the our panelists that we have on so far, um, a few of these questions. Um, Nikki, what does self-advocacy mean to you? Self-advocacy means to me is speaking up for other people or speaking up for myself that are, I speaking up for others who can't advocate for themselves, like people who are being bullied and stuff, you advocate, as what self office means to me, you stick up for others and, and you stick up for your own self. All right. Um, Mel, what, uh, what does self advocacy mean to you? What self advocacy means to me is that knowing that I am a self advocate, I'm strong, I'm very independent on what I believe in. I have always said that and I'm just beginning. I know that all, I believe that all people with disabilities have the right to live their lives just like anyone else. All right, cool. Um, Courtney. I'm going to reiterate <laughs> everything that was just said because I'm sitting here like trying to come up with my own definition and that's 
um, pretty much all of it. We try to um, self advocacy is uh -oh. um, what is um, sticking up for others who can't speak up for themselves and speaking up for ourselves and knowing what we want out of our lives so that we can live um, full and productive lives and um, show everybody else that we are just like everybody else. So. Okay, that's very good um, answers. Uh, so the next one is what makes a good self-advocate? Um, I'll go to Mel this time first. <laughs> What makes a good self advocate? A, per, a good self advocate is knowing <clears throat> the value of what we believe in and the values of what we stand strong on each, each and every day. Um, our values is what we use out here in the community and the way we put, the way we carry ourselves out in the community. That is uh, the thing that people see us as each and every day in the relationship that we carry within ourselves. Um, Nikki, same question. Um, a, a good self advocate is a person that sticks up for your friends and stuff, and you're like, you're always there for everybody who needs you and stuff like that. Courtney? Okay. Um, the a uh, good self advocate is a person who um, carries um, themselves with confidence and is, is perfect. I don't want to say professional because we're not really professional, but our jobs are professional. Um, but carries themselves with a little bit of dignity and respect to themselves because that that reflects good on our community as a whole. And um, to kind of have um, to know that being a self advocate is some sort of um, responsibility that that we all don't take lightly because we have to know what our own rights are and fight fight for ourselves. So as long as we have a little bit of confidence and professionalism, that yeah, that works. <laughs> okay, um, next question. How do you, uh, yeah, okay. Um, how do you advocate for yourself? Um, Nikki? How I advocate for myself is when I go to doctors. If my mom's with me, I, I have them talk to me. So okay. I'm, I got to take this talk, man. And so, no, like, one time I had to go to a doc, foot doctor and he asked me, why I got social security. I'm like, that's none of your business why I get social security. And so that's how I advocate for myself is when I go to doctor by myself, I tell them what I need and what what's wrong with me instead of having my mom do it. Okay, Courtney. Uh it's pretty much the same for me. Uh I had a service dog and we it's it's a little bit different with with uh, a service dog because you not not only have to advocate for yourself but you have to advocate for the dog too because a lot of times the the rules uh, and regulations of a service dog are abused so we, I kind of have to wear two hats and advocate for him to be in public spaces and pu public areas before and the same goes with with doctors as well. I kind of have to make sure that they have eye contact with me and not my mom or uh, my aunt who takes me or, and make sure that they're talking to me and only me and not, yeah. 
because I'm the sick person, so. Well, you also have to do advocate for yourself in the right way. Yes. If you, if you yes. do it in the wrong way, then you'll, you're not yeah. going to get anywhere because you're just going to yeah. be in trouble with yeah. how, how you're doing. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. How do you advocate properly, Courtney? How do I advocate properly? Um, uh, to, to kind of just not yell. That's a big one. Because um, it, it can be frustrating to advocate for yourself all the time. Uh, but one thing you have to remember is that it's not going to get you anywhere to be angry or to fight people or to um, just kind of get your point across in, in the calmest way possible because then, then they'll em sympathize and empathize with you because you're doing the best you can. So, Nikki? I have to agree with Courtney because sometimes it does get frustrating when they when you're at the doctors and stuff and they keep repeating the same questions and over sometimes you just have to calm down and just answer the questions like they want you to do okay i'm gonna go back one uh question uh megan how do you advocate for yourself i advocate for myself because sorry, hang on. Oh, you're you're okay. We can go to another question if you want me to. Understanding issues and to speak out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, Mel, this one is, I'm going to start with you with this one. Okay. How do you advocate for others? I advocate for others in so many ways because I speak up for people. Um, I talk to people. I ask them what they want. Mainly when we do um, all over the place, but mainly when I, when we do our CCR stuff, I ask people what it is they want, what it is that they need to have or would like to have, um, what it is, what's important to them. Because I know personally, what's important to me is being able to have my life, have my freedom. Um, pretty much goals I bring to back when I get ready, you know, to tell people what it is for me. What it is, what what it is about me that I want people to know that I can live my life, and I can live my life just like anyone else. I can make decisions for me. When it comes down to it, I can make decisions to show, and I don't need no guarding or no one just to tell me what I can do and what I cannot do. So yeah. Sean, you should probably ask her how we advocate properly. She missed that one. Um, we'll come back to that one. Okay. Uh, okay. Nikki, same question. How I care for others is like people out, some like people who can't have a voice for their own, like we have to speak up for them. So like people who don't know how you all is there so you can help them out and teach them how to advocate for themselves. True. And I'm going to say again, like the last question that I answered, uh, you have to advocate just like for yourself, but you have to do it in the appropriate ways. If you do it in the wrong ways, then nothing will ever get done. Nobody's going to listen to you. Um, Courtney. Um, it's a little bit different for me. 
because I have a lot of nonverbal friends, so, and they can't speak up for themselves, so I kind of have to, um, and they have parents that advocate for them, but sitting on this board, it has been an opportunity to, for me to be their voice when their parents can't be or when they're not around. So I'm, uh, I'm a person who advocates for people that can't speak for themselves in their own way, so. Okay, Megan, how do you advocate for others? You gotta unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, how to advocate for others. To be compassion and understand their concerns. Okay. Those are good. Yeah, those are good. Thank you. All right, um, Mel, now this other question that we're going to go back to was, how do you advocate properly? <laughs> how do I advocate, how do I advocate properly? It's easy. I, I mean, you advocate in a way that you give, that you give respect. You let people know that you want to have the respect that you need. Um, the proper way is just to tell people that you to advocate for them. You let them know that I tell them that we all got a voice. Disability or not, we all got a voice. And we got a voice that needs to be heard. And if we don't let people know what we know now, our voices never will be heard. And our voices never will be understood. All right, thanks. Um, okay, uh, next one is, how do you get involved in self-advocacy? Um, Courtney. Well, it was a little bit different for me because uh, Betty Williams called me and was like, well, actually, that's a lie, I'll back up. Uh, I did the Building Leadership Conference in uh, Bloomington, Indiana, which is put on by the um, Institute for Com uh, Disability and Community out of IU, which was a, which was a, it was in a conference, but it was a um, classes that we took um, on the basics of of um, self advocacy, and then our our speaker was Betty, and then uh, she called me one day and goes, "You want to be on the board of directors?" And then I she she talked me into it. And uh, here I am, what, 13 years later, still here, so. Okay, well, Megan, so. you the same question. Attend meetings and social media. No, how, how did you get into self-advocacy? Self-advocacy. Oh, I got into self-advocacy through Friends, talking with friends. Okay. Um, self advocate. And, and by looking it up on the internet. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. Um, Nikki, we know, we all know how you got <laughs> into it, but. <laughs> But you can still tell us. Um, 
my aunt darkest nim started self advocates of indiana and i always went to the board meetings with her and i always went everywhere she went when i was little we go out of town and stuff and i go her and betty and then when she died in 2008 i wanted to follow in her footsteps and so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> they still try and become president one day like she did, but I'm still trying to follow in her footsteps. Mel. Well, I'm not like Courtney. I started out and I did, um, I did a class that we call partners in policy making. And that, that class just, I mean, it did wonders for me in that, in, in that building a career. And I went down the first year to the conference and I seen a little lady and it was me. And Betty was really amazed. Betty amazed me just looking at her learn and talk and advocate. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I wanna, I want to be like her. But the first year, I couldn't catch up with her. But lo and behold, the next year, I seen the same lady again. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to leave this conference. I'm not going home <coughs> today until I see who she is. I got to find her. And sure enough, <laughs> I caught up with her. Don't know how, but I did. <laughs> and I talk, we, I slapped her in the middle of the floor and I asked her who she was and she told me and I asked her, I'm like, what did you do? What's going on? And she told me. And she took me back in this room and there were doctors and one or two more and we started talking. And the next thing I know, she was inviting me to the governor's council was that December. I went to that. The next thing I know, she was telling me to come to the board meetings in that day. And that day where I got up and went to the first statewide meeting, that day when, and, and, and that day no more. And it was just, I'm like, whoa, whoa. And just listening to them, listening to me, you still see her. Learn how to ask the questions, I'm like, wow, okay, this is some serious stuff. And I, the next thing I know, within two to three months after that board meeting, she was calling me, asking me, did I want to be the region of rep for region five? And I didn't know what that was, but <laughs> I said yes. I said yes to something I didn't know about. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I started, mm -hmm. it started, but it started from there. And that was in, that was in 2003. Cause we got married in 2005. So I did that, I did self-advocates for two years before I was married. And it has not stopped. So yeah. Okay. Oh, I see you mm. Okay. Um, next question is if you were telling somebody how to, okay, how do people get involved with self advocacy? How would you tell them? Um, let's go with Megan. How would you tell someone how to get to be a self advocacy or how, get involved in self advocacy? I would say if one of your friends came to you and said, how do I get involved with self-advocacy? What would you tell them? I would give them the website to self-advocates of Indiana. And yes. I walk them through it. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Courtney. Uh, I would probably do the same thing, but then I would give them Mel's number 
and be like, this is our past president. She taught me everything I know. So here you go. She's got, you better, you've already got a connection that you didn't have to really work for. So. Okay. Uh, Nikki, I would invite them to um, like a Seth Alex's meeting, like in their workshops, or yeah, I would do that too. Like, or tell, yeah. like, or ask somebody in their workshop to I go to a meeting with them and or invite them to one of our SAI stuff that we have going on and, t and tell them about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... We're going to go to the next one. Mel, how, how to talk, how do you talk to public officials? I have been, I did that so much since I have been doing this. <laughs> so I have talked to um, Governor Holcomb. Mm -hmm. I talk to, I think when my pitch, Governor Pitts was governor, I met up with him, I got a picture somewhere with him. So I just tell him, I just tell all the governors and the head leaders that <laughs> we as people, the biggest thing that I get out of what I do is telling people that we have a voice. That's the main thing. We got a voice, and we need to have our voice too. Um, that's easy to tell the, the governors and the mayors and things that we um, we do have a voice, and it's, it's very important that we that they listen to what we need and what we want them to say, what they, what, what we want them to hear. Um, if we don't listen to them now, if, if they don't listen to us now, they won't understand what we have. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. Um, Megan. Yes. How do you how do you talk to public officials? I try to be clear and organized. Okay. Um, Nikki? Um, like when we have our annual Valentine's thing at the State House, you can like go and talk to them <sighs> and stuff and tell them like what you need and stuff and, and what's important to you. Um, Courtney. Okay. Um, go in with a little bit of confidence because if they see that you're scared they'll be kind of nervous and then that won't get you anywhere um your nerves are half the battle when you you meet with these state officials um of course we've all done it enough on the panel to know what it feels like but for you guys, it's a little bit different. But as long as you go in with with uh, confidence and eye contact and and knowing what you want and what you think this community needs, you're gonna be fine because that's all they want to hear um, is what they can do to make it better. And so. Okay, uh, next one is when should you um, when should you start self advocacy? Um, Nikki? Um, probably like when you're younger, like high school age or middle school age, it's probably when you should, but I mean, you can always start now too, it's never too late to start. A, to be like a step up is or be on the board or anything is never too late. Um, Mel. Um, I would say mm -hmm. just to start it at a young age, I think that would be great. 
I started, I mean, I will say, I, now, now that I sit back and look at a lot of things, I wish that I could have started at a young age, but like Nikki said, now is the time. I think one of the biggest things is you can get kids if they come out of high school or either out of college, it's great too. All right, uh, Megan? When should you when should you start self advocacy? I want to say to help people with special needs. When 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 would you, Megan? When would you start self advocacy? No, I would say now, yes. Yeah. I would say fine. Okay, um, I think we kind of answered this last one um, earlier, but- You where... skipped, you skipped me. Oh, okay, so go ahead then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think you would start to, like in middle school, high school, because in middle school you start you start sticking up for your friends, especially if they're getting bullied for different reasons. Um, so you start to understand what it is to um, stick up for people, which is what self advocacy is. Uh, but everybody's right. It's there's not any certain time or way that you should start if you feel like jumping in head first then great uh, and again if you want to do it a little bit slower and get your feet wet that's great too but okay um this last question we kind of already answered this earlier but um where can someone find more information on self-advocacy um, Melanie? On the website, if they go, on the, go to the um, self-advocate website, it can tell you pretty much everything you need to know. Okay. Uh, do you want to try something, uh, Nikki? Um, you can always go um, like the art.com and they they have like self advocates where you can go and find your like different groups of where Indiana or you can always go on Facebook and go to the self advocates of Indiana page. Or we have we have Twitter too if so. I think we do. Yeah we do. Mm -hmm. Um we still have yeah I yeah. think we still do. Yeah. Well um to reiterate like we we have some pretty good um facebook pages and the arc website is always a good area to go it's a wealth of information uh and if um in our facebook pages and um um our twitter page and instagram so you can see what the fun stuff we get to do so you don't feel like you're doing doing professional stuff all the time. So. All right, cool. Um, well, I'm done with all the questions. So does anybody that's on here have questions for us? There's been some in the chat box, but I, I see one going in the chat box. Sean, we've got one question. What can I do as a parent of young children with disabilities to help them be good self-advocates? What was the most important thing that you ever learned as a young person? Who wants to answer that? I, I can. So. Well, Mel, Mel can go. Mel can go first. I'll go. Um, okay. when, as, as I was young, like I said, when I, as I grew up, 
a lot of the things that we have here for people with disabilities, I didn't have. So I actually learned a lot as I grew. But I I just wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. But like, I wanted to be able to know there was no, I didn't want to like, determine. tell me. I took it among myself to say, okay, this is what I got. This is what I can do. And I made um, all decisions in my life for me. Um, but no one told me. I just did what I did. And it's come out, it's come out good so far for me. <laughs> so just let your children make decisions on your own. Be there for them if they need you. But for the biggest part, let them make their decisions on their own. Courtney, did you have something? Yeah. When I was growing up, my mom always got me books of, of um, like, picture books of people with disabilities or people that looked like me so that it would show me that even even though I look a certain way or um, or I'm in a chair, that doesn't mean that I should be treated any differently than any other person. So maybe it would be good to like look at, I know there's some picture books out there for kids nowadays. Uh, maybe get some of those for your child or your um, kids so that they can feel like there's people out there that look like them. Um, what about you, Megan? Yes, I did want to mention on that one question you mentioned, Sean. Um, I was on local chapters and South Advocates of Indiana for that question. Okay. Um, do we have any more questions? And yeah, we had one one uh, more come through, and I don't Lulu. see it. There's Corn. It says Courtney mentioned picture books that inspired her as a child to be the most she could be. What was her favorite one? There was one called um, Zoom, and it shows like a kid in a chair and a service animal. I got this a little bit when I was older, but um, it's it's um, shows you like the the kid in the chair and what the what the what the service animal does. Um, when you're out in the community um, or how you should be treated out in the community with a service dog. So I think it's still out in the libraries. So you could probably find it somewhere. Um, does Sean, anybody else? Well, yeah. Sean, there was one more question for you guys. Um, I, you guys are from the Self Advocates of Indiana, but you've mentioned clubs what's the do what exactly is the club and how do you get connected sean you want me to answer that yep go ahead there um uh we have certain chapters around the state so there's 47 different chapters around the state that make up us um self advocates in indiana so you might just want to reach out and see if there's self-advocate groups around your community because that's the, that's the easiest and quickest way to um, get involved. And um, you might want to ask them if they're connected with the ARC of Indiana too because that, uh, we, work in, we work in partnership with the ARC as well. So, Courtney, um, what if, there, if they look and there's not a self-advocate group in their area, what should they do? Um, call, um, call
call South Advocates of Indiana and see, I mean, even if they don't see it, we, we might already have one that that's starting up and that needs people. So, um, call the, call the ARC or, or SAI and we'll try to get you connected. At least to the closest one. At least to the closest one. If not to a, a, another further chapter if needed. So. What if somebody wants to start a chapter? What should they do? Um, call we us. haven't. Sorry. Go ahead, Mel. Go ahead. Call, call us. Uh, call the office of Indiana. They need to ask the show Holden or Shannon Ellery, and they can put you into the steps on how to get one started. They can yeah, send you. They can send you a little handbook. We have we, a. Yeah, go ahead, John. We will actually come to your agency or wherever your group is wanting to be started. And we have a full presentation on to show you how to get a self advocacy group started. Yep. Do we still have it? In, do we still have it in the handbook too? It should be. Yeah. Sam has a question for you guys. What is your background? What exactly does Sam mean? What is your that background? That means a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what what experience have you had? I, I, I'm I'm guessing, Sam. If I'm not correct, please please type in what you're looking for. But you know, how how did you get to where you are? What where have you? What have, what's happened? Where have you worked? What has happened that has gotten you to be officers at SAI? How did you get here? Um, I, I I can answer. My aunt. I always wanted to follow in my aunt's footsteps. And when I used to be her helper, I would go to all the board meetings with her and I'd go everywhere with her. And when she died, I, I wanted to, to like follow in her footsteps and, and to do everything she's doing. Um, Courtney, you want to go next? Yeah, I I was actually mentored by one of our um panelists she's mel she's sitting right there and uh betty williams who is not with us anymore they taught me everything that i know and i'm eternally grateful because they they've taught me how to be a good leader and and how to how to be confident on in in myself and how to get the job done. Well, okay. There's a lot of My experience was like I said, I after working as a legion for about four years or well, two years, um Doc has passed away. And at a board meeting, uh we to elect a elect a person a life president to work along the side baby. And like I said, again, unbeknownst to me, they surprised me and asked me to be her guy. And I worked with Betty very closely for about two years. And my husband, and, um, my husband Joe, he was like one day just he and I sit down and I sit the table on Sunday morning. And, he asked me, I mean, I didn't have no thinking, no knowledge about it at all. And he asked me one day, he said, Mel, he said, you want to be president? What do you think about being president? And I'm like, are you serious? And that next day or two, I went in and told them that I wanted to be it. Um, I, worked, I worked at it. I, it, it I learned so much. I learned that my voice, not that I didn't know they know, but I, I learned that my voice needed to be heard. I wanted it to be heard. And I tell people now, a voice, a close voice won't be, you won't be heard. 
talk if you could. No, buddy, I believe in this talk and let people know what you want, what what means the world to you. Um, that knowledge that I have, that knowledge that I have learned, uh, that I learned as president, it has um took me a little bit longer. Now I am now the reason the representative for reason size, which is um uh, which says, and I'm learning more with that. I'm learning more with that, and I'm hoping that. I believe that the line, who knows where that's going to bring me? Who knows where that's going to take me? So, yeah. <laughs> Megan, you want to answer that one? Yes, I will. What is your background? My background experience has been really good. No, like, how did you get to where you are now? <laughs> through my family support and I am on the board and be back on the board and being the secretary of South of Indiana, I'm hoping that I can get reelected. Um, other things I've experienced is I was born with Down syndrome, and I just want to um, support people who have dis have, who have Down syndrome and other disabilities. And I have been speaking about like to have Down syndrome and to tell my so that about my background experiences. Okay, cool. Jill, do we have any more? Yeah, we did. I think we did. Yeah. I saw one come in earlier, but. Yeah, well, one question that somebody asked is how does self advocacy change? Can you know, how can, can you can you be a self advocate when you're young, a child in elementary school or younger? And is that different than being a self advocate as an adult? I think it changes as you grow. Because when I was younger, my mom, my mom would be my advocate. And until I understood what it meant to advocate for myself, did I advocate for myself? So I think coming come into an understanding of what advocating is for yourself, uh, that's the important thing. Advocating for yourself is advocating for others. It, it, it's given me really the understanding of what it, what it means to be a person, what it means to know that, like I said earlier, I got a voice. I got, I, I truly got a voice. And I want, I, my voice needs to be heard. Nikki? I think when you're younger, you you know what self is used, but when you get older, when you get fully involved and you know more of it, here's when you're younger. Because like when I was younger in elementary, I knew what it was because of my hand. But when, now that I'm a dog, it's like, now I'm more fully involved and I know what it means. Like I'm more involved than I was little. Um, Jill, is there any more questions? Uh, we don't have any more questions. Erin, um, 
is on the, the call and um, not a panelist, but on the call. So thank you, Erin, for joining us today. And um, she did mention that she, she not only advocates for herself, but for her, her daughter and um, that all of her friends with ability, she just tries to inspire everybody to be the better that they can be. So another great example of one of the wonderful self-advocates that we have in the state of Indiana. For all of you guys on the panel, I am so lucky to work with you, and it makes me very proud of the work that you do. In the last couple of minutes, do you guys have any kind of or anything that you would like to share with everybody? It's a lot of work, but we wouldn't have it any other way. I know that's right. It's 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 a it's a heavy load to carry, but we wouldn't want to carry it. We wouldn't want it any other way. We wouldn't want another job other than the ones we have. So I know that's right. You said it, Courtney. I I I second you on that one. I agree with Courtney on that. I do too. I do too. Even though we get pulled like this. <laughs> yep. All the time. It is, it is like my whole life. So. It is my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I, I love my, I work, I work for the art along with Sean and I love it. I, I'm like them. I mean, I'm planning on staying here till I retire. <laughs> and I don't have no intention of retiring no way soon. So I've already been here 12 yeah. years and I'm hoping that I can do it 12 more years. Well, and another thing, guys, we want you to know that we're not, we're not here to inspire you. Yes, we're on the panel to talk to you about this stuff and what we do, but we're just, we're just normal people like you. Every and day. That's, that's what that's what people need to understand is is people with disabilities are just like the rest of the world and just because we have disabilities and we're put on the earth to inspire people that's not what that's not why we do this job and I'm, I know Sean will say the same thing and Mel will say the same thing and Nikki will the same thing we're not here to inspire people we're just here to because we do what we do because we love it and that's that that's the 100 percent true yep. i'm just thankful that my aunt started it and I met all my good friends that mm -hmm. I would say the exact same things too. Um, for the last question, Sean, that mentioned, um, no, I didn't. I didn't know about self-advocacy because I was too young to know because my mom and my both my parents advocated for me. So Michelle, we did have somebody ask in the chat box about if this was being recorded, and it is, and it will go up next week. So if you want to watch it again, or if you have somebody that you want to share it with, next week um, it will be posted on the ARC of Indiana's YouTube channel. You can get to that by going to the ARC's website at arcind.org, and on the top um, on the page, you can click on our, our YouTube and it'll take you right there. So any, if there aren't any other last thoughts, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. We're right at, at our time limit. Thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for everything that you do every single day and for being the amazing self-advocates that you are um, and helping so many people here in Indiana. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.